Hey guys, in this video, we've got the Huna truck and this one's built by Associated and it's on the Apex 2 chassis. This one here, if you've seen the previous video here that we got out not too long ago, it was the Hunicorn and that was a much smaller vehicle. This one being 10th scale is a lot larger and should be a lot of fun. This is a brush system and it looks pretty cool. I gotta tell you, I can't wait to get this thing out of the box. In this video, we're gonna get it out of the box. We're gonna see what it's made for. We're gonna go over what you get. Then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna test it. And we'll test it in the way that it should be tested. It is a pavement car, so we'll try and stay with that. Then we'll bring it back in and let you know what we think. And then, of course, at the end, you're gonna get our four questions and they are, is it fun, is it durable, is it worth the money, and where does it stack up? This should be a lot of fun, guys. Check this out. All right, so let's get this thing out of the box. This thing looks cool. Very cool. Get a look at this. That looks pretty cool, I gotta tell you. Very reminiscent of the real thing. I mean, the paint job is very cool. I've got the protective stuff off it yet, but we'll get there. This really does look nice, and it's a genuine Ford F-150 licensed body, just like the real thing. But before we dig into the car, let's see what came in the box. All right, so first off, let's have a look at the radio. And this is the XP120, and these come with most of the associated vehicles. And we've had good and bad luck with these. We've had some of these go bad right away, and we've had some, had some of these work admirably. In the Hunicorn car, it came with the same radio, and it functioned properly. We had absolutely no problems with it. It stayed really good. The bind was good. All the adjustments held. Everything worked properly. I'm kind of mixed on this one, so we'll see how this one holds up. Anyway, this is the radio that comes with it, and of course, it comes with the manual here, and it does come with a binding loop for binding the radio to the receiver in case you do wind up having to do that, and that's this little guy right here. And that'll explain how to do that in the manual for that. It does come with a basic parts kit, and what I've noticed right off the bat here is it does have, if you can see this, I'll try and get you a close-up of this, but it does come with the speed gear. Now in the Hunicorn, we didn't need to put the speed gear in. It was plenty fast the way it was. And we don't generally use the speed gears all that much here. We like to run things the way they come out of the box. So you know what you're gonna get when you get one. So the speed gear is in here if you do want to run it. I would look into the manual and see what's entailed in changing that around. And speaking of the manual, it does come with a full manual for the car and it has a pretty good breakdown in it actually for the car itself. It shows you all the parts and all that good stuff. 
it's not overly detailed as far as you know verbiage on how to do it but it does show you images and it shows you the size screws and all that stuff for putting stuff together so it goes through the car pretty good on that count it does have the manual for the brushed speed control which is right here and this is a brush system so it'll be a brush speed control deal here and if you have any problems with wanting to set your settings or any of that stuff consult this one this one will help you with the speed control and of course it comes with an extra sticker kit, which is always nice. Okay, so let's get this plastic off of here and then we'll dig inside of the truck. So usually these come with a full sheet of plastic, which is kind of fun to peel off. This right here is just little bits and pieces. So it's more of a pain than a pleasure, but at the same time, you only get one chance to peel this off and then it's not new anymore. So here we go. Nice. So with all the plastic bits off of here, have a look at that. It's got a really nice finish to it. It's really shiny, but it's still flat in the bed area, which is really cool. The roll bar looks really good. The fin on the back, it looks like the real deal. The front end is all separated, so this isn't plastic in the front. It is plastic, but it's not Lexan. It's a bolt-on piece in the front. And if you look at it from the inside, you'll see what I mean. See how it attaches here, here, and there. Also, the hood ornaments, which is supposed to be the turbos or what have you, are all attached through here, and everything attaches up in here. And there's clips right here for the roll cage just to hold everything in place. Feels pretty well built. It should hold up good, I would think. The plastic is thick enough to be, you know, rigid and everything. I'm sure that if you flip this over, it'll scar pretty easily. And hopefully we won't have to find out whether that's the case or not. But inside, wow. Okay, that, I wasn't ready for that. This thing weighs quite a bit. Now, the other one, the Hunicorn car, it was really light, didn't weigh much at all. This one on the, this one is substantial. I'm surprised. Let's take a second. I'm going to get the scale in here and see what it weighs up just straight out of the box with the body on it. We're going to find out right now. All right, so sitting on the scales, this thing weighs three pounds, eight and a half ounces which feels really substantial when you get it out of the box. I was really shocked when I first grabbed it. It didn't feel so bad, it, bad's the wrong word, but it didn't feel so massive when it was attached to the cardboard. But once you get it off and feel the weight of this motor, it's got some real girth and there's no batteries in it yet. Now, one thing I did notice is it does have a short battery box. So we'll have to have a short battery for this to get this thing up and running. I'm not sure if I have one of that size, but we'll have a look and see. As far as the car itself goes, the front differential, it's got just a little bit of resistance in it, not much. The back one feels just a bit freer, but it may just need to loosen up a little on some run. The tires, soft rubber compound, pretty nice. It does have adjustable rear links in the back here, right here. These ones seem to be solid fit, but what it is, is you should be able to tune these to get these to be more controllable or less controllable in the corners. And that's pretty cool. The differentials have steel parts in there as far as the pinion and ring gear and all that good stuff goes. The drive axles are all metal as well, which should give it some durability as far as runtime and things like that goes. How long will this hold up before it needs maintenance? It does have a pretty good foam bumper on the front, oil fill shocks. Those ones feel pretty light. They're not super bad, but sort of a medium oil, I would guess. I didn't look at the box or anything. We're just rating this as we find it. The back ones feel just about the same. Interesting. So the radio goes in this box here. The speed control is right up top here. Servo is on this side and the links on everything look really substantial, like it should hold up really well. The chassis itself, really nice. It does look like it gets pretty thin right in the ball areas here. So this is the thinnest bit of plastic right up in here and I'll get you a close-up of the chassis so you can see what I'm talking about but there's swivel points it looks like you may have the same arms all the way around on this so the same arms will go anywhere in the car that's the way it appears right off the bat but the thing is is since you can tune these and turn these a little bit for getting more toe or less toe for control reasons 
this this does look like the thinnest portion right where the right where the bolt and the ball is that looks like it might be the weak point don't know yet we'll find out hopefully we won't trash anything but the chassis itself this has a fiberglass chassis on it and it's a flat chassis it's a much more substantial car than i was expecting all right all that behind us there's only one thing left to do guys let's take this thing out and test it we did search we don't have a battery that fits it so we're gonna have to run off to the hobby store and get one that's the right size for this you won't even know we're gone check this out
Okay guys, there you go. That's the running footage for the Huna truck and this is a fun little car. It is. It's got its place. If you have a moderate sized driveway, this thing seems pretty quick, but if you watched in the footage, when you get it out into the big areas, it does seem to feel a little bit slow. And for a brush system, that's to be expected. If this is something that you're into, albeit for the memorabilia of it, or just something that you want to play with and have fun scootering around in the driveway with, it has its place and it's very cool. This one doesn't land down in the entry level category because it actually costs a bit more than that. This one lands in the budget class and budget class is it's $450 and below. But to get into that entry level class, you have to be much lower than that. And the Hunicorn car was in the entry level class and that's how it rated fifth place. This one's up with the more expensive cars because it runs right at about $349.99 and that we found on A Main Hobby. So you can get one right now for that price as of the airing of this video. At the same time, this thing here has its pluses and its negatives. And here's what we're gonna get into right away in this is, I wanna talk about the tires. Now we had some really good times driving this. It handled pretty good overall, but I'm not a fan of these wheels and tires. We had more problems keeping this going straight with these on it. We had more problems with control with these on it. And the only crashes that we had, we had a couple of small accidents, nothing major. Scurfed a rock one time and scurfed the side of the house the second time. And it put just a little bit of rash right here. Nothing too major. It was minor stuff. But the control issues that come with it, with these tires, they make it a little less than you'd like it to be. It doesn't skate around the way you want it to with these on it. And I'll get into this in a few minutes here, but we put some different tires on it and we had a blast with those on it. Other than that, everything internally worked well. The radio worked good and everything, but with these tires on it, for some reason, we couldn't trim it out and get it to just continually go straight. It wouldn't do it. So having control issues with these tires, it was a weird thing because when we changed over to the other tires, it controlled very well and we put the drifting wheels on it and it was a lot of fun to play with. So internally everything worked really well. Once we got the tires swapped out, the radio handled good and of course I'm not, the vote is still out on the radio system because we've had those fail and that's this one here. And of course this is the XP120 and we've had good and bad with these radios. This one here, it handled just like its little brother on the Hunicorn. This one handled good, everything stayed set pretty well. We did have to chase down some of that steering issue, but only with the stock tires on it. It's kind of weird, but that's the way it functioned. Everything felt pretty good on this one and it held its bind good and we didn't have any problems. We did wind up getting a race ready battery, so the battery was relatively expensive, but you don't have to get a 100C battery to play with this thing. We just got one because that's what they had and I wanted to see how it would perform with it. And that worked out pretty good. But let's touch on the wheels and tires for just a minute because that's a thing for me. The stock ones weren't the greatest, but if you want to run rubber wheels and tires, we grabbed these ones. And this is a full set. There will be a link to these in the description below and the drifting ones. But these are a Traxxas tire and all of the road course cars have pretty much the same connection points. So these go right on it. These ones are a little wider in the back. Let's see if we can get this for you. These are a little wider in the back, that's this one, than the front tires here, and it does help with controllability, and it does skate around pretty nice, but it still gets serious traction, and you have to fight for the corners. This thing does not want to turn. It makes nice wide turns with the rubber tires on it, and it doesn't act the way the Huna truck should act. However, when you switch over to these, these also are Traxxas, and they're the same wheels, at their same setup in fact so they have the wide tire in the back the narrower one in the front these are made of polyvinyl chloride they're plastic and this thing actually acts like it's supposed to with actual drifter wheels on it so when you put the plastic ones on and these are just for playing in the driveways guys this shouldn't be a, a competition thing or anything but if you want this to act the way it's supposed to i highly recommend a set of these because it makes a really big difference and even in a small area, it can be an absolute gas to play with. It's a lot of fun and it acts a lot closer to the real Huna truck than with the rubber tires. These plastic ones, they're kind of a neat thing. So all of that really tight skating around you saw and everything, that was all on these. The high speed stuff you saw out on the 
the larger areas and that type of thing you saw on these and we did some driveway work with these as well but we also ran the stock ones and out of the three sets the stock ones lost the battle both of the other sets of tires work a lot better and I was really a fan of how it acted with those on it. All that being said, the overall experience with this car was good. Now, if you're fairly new to the hobby, this can seem pretty quick and a lot of fun, especially in tight locations. However, if you've been in the hobby a while and you've got some higher speed stuff, we've got the infraction up there and that's 3S and it is it will blow the doors off of that thing and it skates with rubber tires on it. You don't have to put the drifter reels on it to get it to do it you can get for roughly the same basic amount of money you can get something like that that performs a lot better but if you're fairly new to the hobby and the huna truck just reaches out and grabs you it's not a bad vehicle for that being brushed it probably does have some potential for upgrade on that to make it go quicker we did not use the speed gear not a fan of that because we like to drift around and burn up the tires and that has a tendency to overheat that stuff so we don't use those usually so this was done straight out of the box. Everything we did in the did with the car came straight out of the box except for the tire change and that made a pretty big difference for the whole situation. So overall, the experience was really good. If you're new to the hobby, this will be plenty fast and it's a blast, especially if you're younger. But if you've been in the hobby a while, this thing might, not, might just seem a little slow to you. All that being said, the battery we used um, was fairly expensive. It came in right about $90 and we'll have an image of it right here. And we got that at the local hobby store. But you can get 50C batteries that'll still do the same job and they're much less expensive. So throwing the extra money at the battery, I don't really know that it made that big a difference. If you get the same milliamp hour rating, you're going to get about the same runtime. And since this thing is the most fun on the plastic tires, you don't need that 100C punch anyway. So if you can go into a slightly smaller battery, as far as the C rating goes, you can save some money there. All right, so that leads us into our four questions. And if you watch the channel, you know what they are. Is it fun? Is it durable? Is it worth the money? And where does it stack up? Well, the Hoonicorn, which is a 14th scale car, was in the entry level class and I might have said budget class but it's in the entry level class entry level class is 260 and below and that car qualifies for that this one is budget class which is 450 and below because this is a more expensive car like I say at 349.99 right now on a main hobbies this one lands squarely in the budget class it does not come with the batteries and you need batteries for the car and the transmitter and if you don't already have a charger you'll have to get one of those as well you can save some money on a charger and get something less expensive but i don't recommend that get something good take good care of your batteries question number one is it fun well yes it's fun if you set it up correctly and what that means is if you're just driving it around in the driveway and you got the rubber tires on it and it's not driving straight with the stock wheels and tires on it and i know you can trim that out but we leave it the way it's set to see what you get out of the box the reason we do this guys is because if you're new to the hobby you don't know what you're doing you get the car out and play with it it'll act like that and so we run it the way it is to give you the overall evaluation of what you get so when it doesn't control the way you want it to it just kind of goes around and around and around and you can't really get it to kick sideways and do all this without throwing some sand or something down to get it to kick it can get boring kind of fast because the action that you're expecting isn't there however with the tire change and just a tire change, it becomes a really good rig to drive. Since you have to do a little working on it to get it to go there and you have to spend a little money on some other tires and wheels to get it to, to do what it's supposed to, we're gonna give this one seven out of 10 for fun because once you get the adjustments made, it's a blast to play with, but what you get out of the box isn't exactly what you're hoping for because you may have to do a little something to it to get it to act the way you expect it to. And question number two, is it durable? Well. We ran it the way it was supposed to be run, so we ran it on pavement and we took it out to some fairly rough pavement and some pretty smooth pavement. And it worked really well on all that stuff. If you've got big area, then big sweeping turns aren't a problem, but it does seem a little bit slow on that. However, at the same time, running in the situations that we ran in, we only lightly bumped the bricks once and we only lightly touched the garage, so we didn't really have the opportunity to do real damage. It wasn't something that we were going to just point it at something, pull the trigger and see how strong it is. That's not the way it works here. We drive these things a lot, so we have a pretty good skill set for driving these. And so when we're running pavement cars, we never intentionally try and trash a car. 
if the driving's good, the driving's clean, the car handled good and all that good stuff, and we don't have any problems, but if the car gets out of pocket and we slam it into something, then we can actually give you a solid durability point. At this, at this point in the video right now though, we did get some body damage, minor, didn't take much. It, it scratched the side a little bit and it loosened up the front right up here. I'll show you. It's not a big deal. It's minor all the way around. The foam block in the front did a pretty good job, but right here where we touched the house with it, it separated this just a little bit and we've got a small crack in the bumper. Guys, that's so minor, it's not even funny. At the same time, the overall truck is still what it should be. Given the fact that we haven't had a chance to really push this in an area where it could get some damage, we're only going to give this one 8 out of 10 for durability because we really don't know how tough this is going to be until it gets into those situations. So for durability, 8 out of 10. And question number three, is this thing worth the money? Well, coming in at just about $350, for some of us, that could be a pretty good investment. And that's the thing, if you're going to put $350 into something and then have to buy batteries and potentially wheels and tires to get it to handle the way you want it to, you're going to be into that quite a bit. And for what you get for the car, that may not be the thing. Now, if this has some reach out to you because of what Ken Block did in the real one and you want to have a piece of that history, then this vehicle raises up in the value category a little bit if that means something to you. If you're just getting an RC car to go out and play with it, it's going to run a little lower on the value because of what you have to add to it and the initial cost of the car. What I see right now is that the car itself functioned properly. The radio worked good. The motor never got hot. And that's what I wanted to touch on and haven't got to yet. We ran the full battery through it and we did this many times, but we ran a full battery through it and I reached out and I just grabbed the can just to see how hot the motor got and you could lay your hand on it. So it was running cool enough and we were running at 97 degrees outside guys. So it was already a warm day on that particular outing and you reach out and grab a hold of it and it didn't get hot. You can put your thumb on the speed control. That wasn't overly hot either. So there is some room to play with it for as far as gearing goes and that might be something you could look into. So heat up is not a problem. The battery didn't get warm. Everything sort of worked out good in that category. At the same time, for value, it's still a lot of money to throw at this car. And I'm gonna give this one seven out of 10 for value because what you have to put into it to get it to do what you want it to, you could easily throw at something bigger or better and get about the same action. If you went to say to Arma and you went to one of their 3S platform cars, you can get into that for about that money footprint and you can get a lot more performance, you can get a lot more speed, you can get a lot more of what you're looking for. You'd still have to buy batteries, you'd still have to buy a charger if you don't have one, but at the same time, the performance you get versus the performance you would get with this one, I think it's kind of lacking just a little bit. And question number four, where does this stack up in our collection? Well, we have several lists here and this one lands in two of them. So they all land in the first one, which is our overall list. And we have a lot of cars in that list. And it takes, it takes a lot of car to bust into the top of that list. At the same time, this one's going to bump the Hoonicorn down one level to land in 40th place overall on the channel. So that bumps the Hoonicorn down into 41st place. This one here is running at 40 in the overall channel. The Hoonicorn is in the entry level category running at fifth in entry level because of the price point for that car. This one being in the budget class, it's got a lot more competition and there's a lot of good cars in there from low C to Arma to Traxxas. There's all kinds of stuff in that category. This one here, the Huna truck from Associated is going to land in 13th place in the budget class. And that's not bad. There's quite a few cars in there. So 13th place is fair for what it is. I am really glad we have one and I really do like this car. So there you go, the Huna truck from Associated on the Apex 2 chassis and, you know, it's a pretty cool car. If you haven't already, don't forget to bash that like button and help our content spread. You know, we love doing these kind of videos and getting out the new stuff is always kind of neat to check out and see what there is. Bear in mind that we're learning about these cars right along with you. When we get it out of the box, it's literally the first time we've got that car out and it's the first time we get to lay our hands on it and check it out and all that stuff. Here at the, the channel, we don't gut it out and have a look at all the little components and tell you how big the 
shock shafts are and all the windings in the motor. We don't go into that kind of detail here. We pull it out of the box and as it needs to be repaired, then we learn about what it is. This is straight out of the box, just like a new person would get. And we give you our evaluations from there. So, hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studio saying, keep bashing guys.